Hey everybody, here's a variation on the Serial Planes um, project that we basically started off the, uh, the course with. And um, what I like is the way um, this is generated by an array and uh, we, can, uh, we can multiply the planes and scale them and um, very interesting, uh, almost uh, infinite possibilities here with this one. So uh, let's get started. Let me show you how to do this. So file new, reload startup file, and I'm going to hit the letter X and delete that. Then I'm going to add a shift A mesh plane and rotate it on the X axis. So R X 90, enter. And next let's thicken that up. So let's zoom in a little bit so you can see that. So I'm going to add a modifier. So click on the wrench in the menu here. Add modifier, solidify. And I'm going to dial up the thickness by scrubbing to about 0.7 or 0.8. OK, uh, next let's add an empty plane axis in here. So I'm going to say Shift A, empty plane axis. Good. Um, next, let's hit number 7 and then number 5 on your numpad and right click on your plane and offset it back about like this and maybe down if you want a little bit. Okay, and then on the left, set origin to 3D cursor so that it pivots around this center point here. Very good. So let's apply that modifier for thickening it and then let's add a new array modifier. Okay, now click constant offset, undo relative offset, put the count up to 24, enter, click object offset, and click empty. So what this does is it uh, allows the empty to control how uh, the 24 new planes will react. And so, uh, next click on the empty to activate it, and then we're going to rotate it. Since I moved it in this direction, I'm going to start with the x-axis, so I'm going to hit R, X, and just dial my mouse, and bring that around till it's somewhat even like that. And it's an interesting enough object, but why don't we uh, go to hit number one and look at it from the other side and rotate this on the Y axis, so R, Y. And then I'm going to pull that and see how that's doing here. Let me even it up a little bit, so R and Y. And that's pretty good. Um, so right there is a really interesting object. So uh, along the, uh, uh, the way, um, hmm. actually, since I like this enough, I'm going to stop at this point and build it out with a, uh, a base and lighting and a plane and then um, as we'll take an image or two of it render it out and then finally let's uh, play with it both on the z-axis and scaling it to arrive at the figure I first showed you <clears throat> so I'm gonna hit number one 
I want to uh, lock my camera to the viewport, so I'm going to hit the letter N, lock camera to view, N to get rid of the menu, numpad 0 to see what the camera is seeing, and OK. I'm going to rotate this object up a little bit, so hit R. Oops, you can escape that. What I want to do is click on the, not the empty to rotate, but the, the plane. OK, so rotate that. So as it turns out, um, because of the unique nature of the array here, um, um, what I'm, I'm actually doing is rotating uh, either the empty or the plane and arriving at um, very interesting variations, but I, I'm not flipping the whole piece upwards as I intended. Um, so. This is very cool. Uh, you could pause at any one of these objects, and it would uh, be very interesting. Um, you pause it by left-clicking, and <clears throat> so. Notice that was the empty that I was just rotating. When I click on the plane and rotate it, I can depending on my orientation here, come up with all these very, very nice variations. So, okay. I'm going to hit zero to get out of the camera view, and number one for the moment, and left click, shift A, a mesh cube. And this will become a base for our object here. I'm going to hit number three so I can center it from the right side. And then let's rotate this and see how it's setting up. Looking pretty good. <clears throat> okay, right click on your lamp, go to the properties for the lamp at the top. Click Cycles Render. Um, we'll do a Spotlight and click Use Nodes and Strength. Let's set to uh, 2500 for now. And I'm going to move this lamp and rotate it back. Also, uh, let's see, R, rotate it up and in. I'm going to left click and put a plane under this. Shift A, mesh plane, and scale it to 100. So S100, enter. And now we're ready to start previewing what we've got here. So I'm coming over to. Uh, next to the object mode, rendered viewport shading, and taking a peek at how this is shaping up here. And number zero, uh, let's see, go back to solid, numpad zero, um, hit the letter N if we haven't done this already. Yes, we have, lock camera to view and come back to rendered. I'm going to click the camera and lower my X resolution, raise my Y resolution, zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> I'm also going to go on, click on the lamp and lamp properties and raise the strength up. Let's try 4000. So tweak the uh, strength according to what you're seeing and if 
if you want to move the lamp around uh, or add a secondary lamp to the back side of this. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to move the lamp. So I'm going to hit 0 to get out of the camera view. Come back to solid. I'm going to hit number 7 to look at this from the overhead position on your numpad and just move the, the lamp directly over the object and hit number 1 to see it from the front ortho then R to rotate it in number 3 to hit it from the side and then R to rotate it in and now let's preview it through the camera again and I think that's going to Solid seven. I'm going to move the camera, the light just a little bit more in front of the object to get a little more light into the front of it. But I'm still trying to. Let's go back to rendered here. And look at it through the camera point of view. Okay, so now I can take the power down back to 2500 uh, so I don't blow out any of these highlights. Okay, things are shaping up better. Um, for a little extra drama, I'm going to darken the world. So I'm going to click this orb right here on the menu. And for color, I'll drop this down. Oh, maybe add a little blue. No, too much. tiniest bit of color as I drop this down. Okay, I'm going to render it now, so um, <clears throat> let me hit pause here. I'm going to hit F12 to start the rendering process, and then I will pause it. Okay, that was a pretty good fast render. Uh, it took 35 seconds. And um, hit F3 to save this and uh, post it into your Google Drive and into the, onto the blog. Um, and now let's do some variations. This we're all set for light and whatnot. So I'm going to hit Escape. And 0 and to get out of the camera view and then come back to solid viewport shading and I'm going to click on the plane here and hit R for rotate and try a different shape in here and if I come to from a different point of view and hit R Again, yeah. kind of like this. Um, if I hit R Z, that'll do another uh, variation from the top. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Good. So I'm um, going to hit F12 again. And without changing a thing, the camera position is still the same, the light is still the same. I have a very quick variation here. So let me pause it again. That took about a second less at 34 seconds. Hit F3, save this, and rinse and repeat. Why don't you try doing five or six of these variations? Um, once again, I hit Escape. I'm in solid mode here. This time I'm going to click on the empty and rotate it. So R 
and let's see. Let me come overhead to number seven and hit R. And no, oh, it's still doing that. Let me hit S for scale and take a peek at how this is shaping up differently. Um, move this down. Oops. Move this up. And that's interesting too, the way that's getting offset. Um, if that gets bigger beyond the light, then uh, notice if we hit render it, it's going to be out of range a little bit. That's kind of nice though. Let's see it from the zero point of view. Now, so the camera point of view is a little messy. Um, so you get the idea. Move the, um, the lamp and its strength. Experiment with scaling and rotating both the cube and the, or the original plane and the empty axis and see what variations you can come up with. This is pretty addictive and fun. And um, yep, yeah, have fun. Uh, post your best work and see you on the blog.